Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! I'm going to move on from Brexit, but you'll allow me one final wry chuckle, won't you? Do you remember Marc Francois, the bloke who was on telly? We'd never really heard of him before. Turns out he's number two in the ERG. He's a bloke that turned up on telly saying that we had to do a no-deal Brexit because his granddad was a soldier or something. To end this intervention is a classic example of the sort of Teutonic arrogance, which is one of the reasons why many people voted to leave the European Union. If he thinks he, because he runs a big company, he can bully British MPs how to vote, he's going to be sorely mistaken. My father, Reginald Francois, was a D-Day veteran. He, uh, he never uh, submitted to bullying by any German. Neither will his son. So if Mr Enders is watching, that's what he can do with his left hand. Silly, right? His nationality... No, it's not silly. How just a minute, you've said your bit. His nationality, for me, to be honest, doesn't matter. Partly because, in the end, all the EU uh, people you speak to, but also their businesses, see this as damage limitation. Yeah. Believe it or not, they don't want to bully us, Mark. This is going yeah, no, to be... Hang on just a minute. What, what, this is going to be bad for them, and it's going to be bad for us. And I think if we go back to this kind of rhetoric from the 1940s, look, okay. my grandfather... No, 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 wait, hang on just a minute. No, no, my no, grandfather no, 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 prosecuted the Nazis at Nuremberg, right? Yeah. We don't want to go back to that kind of space. Yeah, no, we no, don't want to go back no, to that no, kind of point, sentiment you, and attitude. You we don't to need to go there. These guys... Employ hundreds yes, of thousands of British people providing their jobs. We want to know what they. Do you remember that? I, 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 you know, eventually that's all that's going to be left. I, I used to joke about passports and fish, but the eventual position of these people will, whatever happens, will be the Second World War. Uh, the finally, the only rationale you're going to have left will be some utterly spurious notion of uh, other European countries somehow being our enemies. A reminder now of our main story this evening. Theresa May says she intends to go back to Brussels to renegotiate her Brexit deal, but EU leaders say the deal is done and they will not reopen talks. It is the night of May the 16th, 1943. In all the skies of Europe at war, one squadron only is flying. Enemy coast ahead. Their task, to breach the great dams of the Ruhr Valley. Tonight, they are 617 squadron. Tomorrow, the world will know them as... You are with the dam busters in action, pouring at treetop height into the heart of the Third Reich. The human drama which preceded this incredible raid reveals the inspiration and obsession of one man with an idea. Gammon. Noun. Derogatory. Believed by some to be a slur. According to one former aide to Jeremy Corbyn, it denotes a condition that once manifested itself as an affinity to UKIP, but now more so to high blood pressure and a red meat complexion. Boldness is optional. In the matter of Brexit, our politicians have not merely failed to bring the people to understand the crucial issues at stake, they have given us a false picture. Brexit is presented primarily as a matter of economics, mm -hmm. rather than a struggle for freedom yes. from bondage, bondage to a dictatorial continental oligarchy. We've been given a picture of a negotiation between friends and partners. We are, in fact, at war. Yes. What is war between states? It's a struggle for domination yes. of one, over, one state over another. Yeah. And now we are involved in a one-sided war in which our enemies abroad and at home are winning while we are in shameful retreat. It was reported last week that Michel Barnier chief European you know, negotiator, said he would regard his task completed when he'd inflicted sufficient pain on the British to make us decide not to leave the EU. Mm -hmm. These are not the words of a friend. No. 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 These are the words of an enemy yes. intent on our defeat. Yes. If we are to avoid this defeat, we must make a fundamental change in our approach. 
and in our underlying assumptions. We still need powerful, inspired and inspiring leadership. Equally, we shall need unity and a readiness for sacrifice among all of those who care for our freedom. You can't visit Grimethorpe without popping into the Working Men's Club. When Harry met Danny, it was down the pit back in 1958. Today, they're putting Brexit to rights. Yeah. Brexit, how did you vote in the referendum? I voted to stay. Remain? Remain, yeah. I voted to leave. Why, uh, have you changed your minds now? No. No. So some people say that the, a, the reason, one of the reasons they were they voted for Brexit was they were worried about immigration. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that was the main the thing round here. There's that many different immigrants and different people. Oh, yeah, there's 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 many big cities and the places. And but, I mean, but there's been that for years. No, I know, but it's, it's, it's I travel to not watch them. Not even travel. You're just going to do much. They're, they're taking kids' jobs. Jobs are going. No, they're not. Them kids won't have them. Oh well. We fought in the Second World War, we liberated France, we liberated Belgium, we bet the Germans and what we're getting now, trying to tell us what we can do, what we can't do. You were yeah. saying the white shirt, yes. Yeah. Uh, if you happen to look out in the car park here, you'll see virtually all the cars are German or Fran French. Uh, so I think they need us as much as we need them. OK. And you say in the very front. <laughs> is talking such negative nonsense it is ridiculous we are leaving the EU there's a meeting tomorrow in cabinet things will be sorted as Matthew said some sort of compromise will have to ensue and it will you wait till tomorrow evening it'll all be agreed now let's not it will be agreed it will be agreed the fact is we are moving forward out of the EU and that's a damn good thing for our country and pretty is talking a lot of sense which yeah. is pointed out to five there why don't you get your heads together with Labour and work with the Conservatives? We voted to leave. Yeah. Let us leave, all right? That is the answer. Now, the other thing is, right, why should the EU dictate to us, a very big nation, of what we can do or what we can't do? I think that is a load of rubbish. Who's doing the leave? Yeah? Who's doing the leave? We are leaving, yeah? And it's the best thing that will ever happen to the United Kingdom. I can tell you that, all right? All right? The woman in the front row here. When I drive into Exeter, I come through a trading estate which has one road with 11 garages that's supplied by Europe. Are you telling me that they're going to stop doing that? That's a load of rubbish. We get a good deal because they will want it. Having been around the first referendum and voting on it, it's like an echo chamber. <laughs> I'm listening to everything that took place then. Then we were told, common market, oh yes, our trade will be superb, we're going to get on with it, we can sell our products, and we've got Europe to go at. Now, after being asset stripped, this country, which was the biggest manufacturing industry in the world, <coughs> railways, shipping, airplanes, you name it, we built it. Electric engines that were on the Panama Canal in the 1800s, and were still there 100 years later. And they couldn't put one back that they buy in Japan. Okay. And English Electric and the likes of that were lost. And you, sir, next. Woman there on the left, there in blue. Yes. You. Thank you. I am really fed up of all the arguing. Nothing is getting really sorted out. We are a democracy. The House of Lords is not elected. <clears throat> our MPs are, and they're there and always have been to carry out the will of the people. For me, all this in bickering has been said is going on too long, and I cannot see why they just don't get their act together, get rid of the negativity that I have picked up here. They should really not talk about failure of these talks that they're having it's about having a positive outlook going into it churchill would not have put up with all this and i am beginning to think and no matter people may laugh but donald trump was able to go and get an agreement without the will of his 
parliament, so to speak. And I'm beginning to think that possibly someone like that is needed here All to right. take charge and sort it out. The woman with spectacles in the second row from the back. I absolutely agree with Richard Maidley. What this country needs is Winston Churchill moment. It needs our government to stand up for the democratic right of what the people voted for and get us fully out of Europe. Hey, miss up there. <laughs> what do you make of it? What do you make of it? Well, oh, right, you. Sorry, mate. Yeah, go on. <laughs> We're the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. We voted to leave, so let's pull up anchor and sail away, OK? And then we'll be able to sort ourselves going? out. And then... <laughs> you know, you know, Song. Leave, I mean, Sailor Wayne is a lovely song, but you need to go somewhere, so do you know what I mean? And you sit at the back, in the second row from the back there. Would the disruption we are during the First and Second World Wars, would a no-deal Brexit really be that bad? When you think of all the supply ships are getting blown out of the Atlantic, yes. and we worried about this no-deal. Okay. We yes. got through that, and sure we can get through it uh, with a no-deal. That's all you're going to have left. The par Expect more, oddly, World War II. Um, absurdity in the coming days and weeks, not less, because they will have nothing left. And that's the whole point of Dr. Johnson's line about patriotism being the last refuge of a scoundrel. On what possible planet does Brexit have anything to do with war or, 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 or battle? It, it, it simply doesn't. But you've persuaded millions of people that this institution is their enemy You've got nowhere left to go, as evidence mounts that it's not their enemy at all, except to double down on the insistence that it's their enemy. Oh, that, that, that Dominic Grieve, he's, he's like an appeaser. Or that, um, that Anna Soubry, she's, she's like, oh, cr 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 crikey, Neville Chamberlain. I don't know. Do you, do you see what I mean? There'd be nothing left eventually except utterly hollow Second World War analogies. And again, I would point out to you, the people, the men who make those comparisons think you are stupid. I would love you to prove them wrong. Speaking of stupid and wrong, Marc Francois, the deputy head of the ERG, has chipped into the um, Karen Bradley furore. Three gaffes yesterday by cabinet ministers who collectively managed to offend black people, Muslim people and Irish people. A uh, little taste of Brexit for you there, which of course, don't forget, some people will love. Excellent. Black people, Muslims and Irish people being offended and insulted and denigrated. That's why I voted to leave, some of them might say. But you'll remember Karen Bradley has said these astonishing words, almost admirable for a politician. I want to be very clear, I do not believe what I said, that is not my view. What do you think Mark Francois has to say about Karen Bradley's comments? He told Newsnight last night, I support Karen Bradley. This is a moment of absolute beauty in the context of Brexit and the broader political picture. You have a cabinet minister disowning her own position so completely that she was comfortable publicly stating, I do not believe what I said. I do not believe what I said. Let's cross now to the deputy leader of the ERG and ask him what he thinks about the thing that the woman said that she didn't believe that she said and has completely disowned and apologised for profusely. Deputy leader of the ERG says, my granddad was a... So no, not that bit, this other soundbite. I support Karen Bradley. That sort of sums up everything, doesn't it? Cabinet minister says something outrageous, apologises for it, disowns it, and utters the phrase, I do not believe what I said, that is not my view, crossing live to the deputy leader of the ERG who says, I support Karen Bradley. <laughs> Seven minutes after 11 is the time you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. I thought that Brexit was a bit vanilla. I, I don't think it gets passions. Heated enough. I don't think it, it, it lends itself to heated debate in quite the way that some subjects do. So I am toying at seven minutes after 11 with the idea of, of, of opening up the Pandora's box of transgender issues for reasons that I have explained to you and which I go over uh, laboriously in my best-selling book, How to Be Right. The trans debate is one that just makes me go like this. Are you watching? Ugh. 
I, I, I take the view that transgender is real, that people who have transitioned or who are transitioning deserve a degree of protection from society. I simultaneously struggle to support, and I don't even struggle to support, I simultaneously don't think that female-only spaces should be open to people with penises. It's just impossible at the moment to conduct a conversation from that position. You have to be either 100% there's no such thing as trans or they don't deserve any support or yada yada boom or you go the other way which is anybody who says they're a man uh, a, a woman, I beg your pardon, is allowed to go into places that are historically and traditionally reserved for women. The problem is largely theoretical which makes it an even madder area of debate. You, 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 you can debate theory and you can say, well, that might happen and that's why I don't like it. And then the other person says, but that's never happened. And then the other person says, that doesn't mean it never will. And then the other person says, yeah, but it never has. And the other person says, yeah, but it, it might. And you go, yeah, but it never has. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it never will. And that's why, as a debate, unless you are fully versed in the sort of red top tabloid trick of picking a side, insincerely, you pick the side that's going to be most provocative to the easily provoked and you just keep banging that drum. And then you've got them in this debate as well. There's loads of them around. But and, and, and the weirdest one of all is the sporting example. I, I think, and we are going to talk about this, I'm only teasing you, I think it's fair to say that there aren't any male to female transgender athletes of note. I mean, literally no body born a man who now identifies as a woman has sought... A place in a in a major sporting event or team. I'm open to correction on that, but you know what I'm doing. I'm doing that. It's never happened, and you're going to ring me up because it doesn't mean it never will. <laughs> um, and and part of the reason I don't generally have debates like this is because people keep telling me I have to. Every, everyone's convinced I'm on the opposite side to them on this debate. You've got the. Uh, I, for the record, my whole attitude to, to trans issues was essentially informed by a, a lad called Fox who was born as a woman and who came into the studio and gave me an education and, and changed my views. But they're not, of, they're not so completely in support of trans people that I would ride roughshod over the rights and, and, and protections of people who were born female and don't want human beings with penises in their changing rooms at the swimming pool. That, that, that again, lends itself immediately to a, well, it never happens. Doesn't mean it never will. So that's why I find it a, a strangely unnourishing, um, a strangely unnourishing conversation. So I'm pretty sure Caitlyn Jenner went the other way. I'm pretty sure Caitlyn Jenner was born a man and was a major athlete. So I don't know, a couple of people have sent me that name for whatever reason, but I don't think that she's an example of somebody born male becoming female and seeking a position in a major sporting team or event. Is, is she? She wants to be a major sport? No, I didn't think so. Anyway, I'm open to correction on that. I guess what I'm sort of dancing around is a simple statement that it's, um, it surely shouldn't even be controversial, should it? Martina Navratilova's got into trouble. Sharon Davis has joined in. Today, Dame Kelly Holmes has reportedly been targeted by activists. I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, for essentially just saying that those with a male sex advantage should not be able to compete in women's sport. Uh, as, as, again, as I understand it, the sort of treatment you need hormonally if you're transitioning properly one of the first things it would do would be to reduce some of your physical strength but i'm not a scientist i'm not a doctor i i just think on this one it's um it's probably one of those days where we have to have a conversation that i'd rather not have because if we don't i'm afraid the lunatics might take over the asylum so there is right and wrong on both sides of this debate i would urge you to read up on the story of lucy meadows and the uh, interventions of a journalist called Richard Littlejohn in, in her case and have a look at some of what the coroner had to say after Lucy Meadows took her life. It, it, Lucy was born a man um, 
and that chapter in my book is is the one that people oddly because you'd think it would be Brexit or Trump or political correctness or Islam or immigration but that is the chapter people at signings mention to me most as, as being the one that really stopped them in their tracks and made them think so I have a um, I have a difficulty having this debate because it upsets everybody Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three is the number you need and the question is why is it controversial to say that if you were born a man you're not allowed to go into women's running races or swimming galas or football teams oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three i may need educating on this one but i'm afraid from where i'm sitting martina navratilova paula radcliffe kelly holmes Sharon Davis haven't even done something that needs defending. It's, it's, it's blindingly obvious that biologically men are stronger than women. So if you're born a man, then at least for a significant period of your transition to womanhood, you, you don't get to compete against women. It reminds me of that Billie Jean King film. Did you watch that film? It's really good, actually. With, with the girl out of La La Land in it. The young woman out of La La Land. A little bit mild, blokish misogyny creeping in there. What was it called? The, the Billie Jean King played. It got challenged by a man. Fisher, his name was. It's a really, really good film. But the point was that a, a, a very lowly ranked male tennis player would do very, very well in the women's circuit. And, and I, maybe I'm being a bit simplistic, possibly even glib. But... That's the point, isn't it? Hey, any any man, it's called Battle of the Sexes, isn't it? Any, any man in the top, what, 500 tennis players in the world would probably be in the top 10 women if they were playing like for like. Am I, I again, I, I quite like learning. I'm not one of the, thank God, because I'm 47 now, and I think this is the point in my life where I either quadruple down on my own opinions and never change them, or I, I, I stick my head out the window. It's why I think young people have so much to teach us about things like gender fluidity and sexuality and all these sort of things, a lot of which I find quite discomforting. But I like being discomforted because I've got a mind and I like changing it. I like learning new stuff. I realise that the world is currently run by people who hate change, who hate learning new stuff, who are terrified of modernity or progress. But, you know, I'm not one of them. Luckily, I, I feel enormous sympathy for people who are in those handcuffs and straight jackets. But on this one, you can tell by the strangely circuitous nature of my introduction. I'm all over the shop. It just seems to me to be utterly inarguable that I shouldn't be able to, by dint of making a statement about how I identify, enter women's Wimbledon this year. 03456060973 if you want to educate me, challenge me, indoctrinate me, or attack me. Everybody's welcome. I was just looking at a picture of my youngest at World Book Day, and astonishingly, she, she didn't take my suggestion. I thought she should go as me. I got loads, I, loads of costumes she could have worn. I just I said, go in a stripy shirt and just put your head in your hands and sit at your desk all day going like that. I thought that worked really... I'm only joking. Um, I have no idea what their teachers dressed at. It looks extremely cool, but I would struggle to name that book in one. We digress. We're talking about trans um, issues, in this case, athletics. And I, I, I appreciate that this is a conversation that upsets absolutely everybody. And if you don't have a side in that sense, it's, it's a frustrating conversation to have. But I think those of us who, who are open-minded and a bit confused and, and not blindly allied to either position, I think we're the ones that have to have these conversations, aren't we? Otherwise, the battlefield is dominated exclusively with people who are never going to budge an inch, which means the battle won't be over until one side is completely annihilated, and that hardly ever happens. Kate is in Islington. Kate, what do you think? Hi, uh, just two things. You said you, um, earlier when you were speaking about this, you didn't understand what um, trans activists were doing against um, Dane Kelly Holmes. So just to explain that, um, specialised sponsor Dane Kelly Holmes. Yes. And Rachel McKinnon, who is a trans woman, has put a complaint in to Specialised, right. um, asking them to withdraw funding. Specialised... And responded. Garmin as well, Garmin, on the grounds that she has been transphobic. Yeah, and okay. Specialised have responded initially and immediately by saying thank you for alerting us to this 
um, these attitudes are not welcome within specialised. Now, there has been a pushback on that from women. He says this um, specifically. So We've got to get... I mean, I, I don't want to sound ungrateful because you are quite rightly correcting me, but, but we need to be 100% clear on precisely what has and hasn't been said. It says, thanks for flagging this, Rachel. This is not yeah. representative of our brand values. I just want to get yeah. the words e exactly right. So there is the, the debate. And, and given that none, yeah. of the, none of the figures that we're naming are here to either defend themselves or, or respond, we, we, we'll probably leave the specifics of this. Yes, but that, that's all that's out there it. for people to yes. see on Twitter. Correct. So people yes. can see that for themselves. The second thing is why it's controversial to talk about this. And it's because politically we Bobby have accepted... Riggs. Bobby Riggs, wasn't it? Not Fisher. Well, Fisher was the chess player. Anyway, carry on. For, forget yeah. me. Yes. Uh, politically, we've accepted um, the idea from trans activists that trans women are women which has opened the gates to trans women being able to access everything that was um, protected for women. So schools, no, I know, I know all prisons. of this, Kate, and I'm not that's having that debate. I'm not having that debate today. I'm having no, a no, debate today fine. specifically about athletes. And, and what, 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 where does it become in the mind of Rachel McKinnon and others where does it become transphobic to say that those with a male sex advantage should not be able to compete in women's sport? Because trans women are women. That's the idea we've bought into. Trans women are women and therefore must be able to compete in sport, must be able to access all the other areas, must be able to, because they are women. Once we accept no, no, that... I, no, 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 I, I, I even understand that. But are they women at the moment they say they're women? This is why you have hilarious tweets about bearded blokes calling themselves Monica and, and, and uh, being furious that they're not allowed into the, the women-only bit of the sauna. I, I just find it, it ridiculous. I, I, want, I want the real examples of where a, a, a human being who was born as a man but now identifies as a woman has tried to join Wimbledon or, or, or join the Olympics or race against race against women in, in, in a swimming pool. Are there any examples of that yet? Well, there are definitely um, trans women out there where, where, competing. Where? What? what? Um, where? Oh, God, I wish, I'd, I wish I'd written all the names down for well, you. Just there's give me a weightlifter. One. Who? There's a weightlifter. There's right. um, a weightlifter a... competing as a woman. And as at what woman. point as in the transition is... process is, is, is she now? You're not allowed to ask that. We don't know. Well, again, so we I, know again I've, I've just asked it. So you are allowed to ask that. You see, uh, you might be telling me that according to the weightlifting, International Weightlifting Federation, they're not allowed to ask, in which case I'll double check. But this is the most interesting um, thing I've seen. And the reason why I've, I've, I've marshaled my forces to talk about it today is actually a Twitter thread that, that points out, I mean, it's, it's brilliant in many ways, because it points out that there, there aren't really any. Uh, here you go. Name a transgender. You, do you want to do this, Kate? Name a transgender Olympian off the top of your head. Go on. Not an Olympian. This is all fairly new, but this, this is this is this is quite new. Well, the, the IOC. Are... No, it isn't, Kate, because the IOC started allowing transgender people to c compete in 2004. So you've got 15 years to draw on. Just name one. Transgender people competing is fairly yes. new. So to tell me, no, in 2004 they were allowed to. So name one. What, you're kind of not listening to what I'm answering you. Transgender... Well, I'm asking for a name. 15 years they've been allowed to compete. So tell me one that has. Transgender women actually competing yes. in women's sports... In the Olympics. ...is quite new. But the they've been allowed to do it since 2004. It, it is not quite new. It's a decade and a half old. They have been allowed to compete. Now, if there were lots then I would expect the IOC to address this. But if there aren't any, I genuinely don't understand why it's a, a controversy, because it just falls so neatly into that paradigm I described a moment ago. There isn't anything happening. Yeah, but it might happen one day. Yeah, but there isn't anything happening. Yeah, but it might happen one day. Yeah, but there isn't. So I'll ask you again, is there anything happening now that in the 15 years since the Olympic movement allowed transgender people to compete, can you think of one who has? There are transgender women yes competing no. in female sports at the moment. No, yes, fine. there are. But since, I cannot since, give you their name. Okay, well, someone else will be able to. I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to believe you. Um, I, and again, you need to be clear on a couple of other things. There's a South African athlete who I don't think is transgender. I think they're intersex. I could be wrong. This is so important. These are the most important words in this hour. I could be wrong. I am thinking out loud. But I'm pretty sure that South African athlete isn't transgender. There's dispute about the biology of her birth, but not about her 
self-identification, as it were. Carrie's in Shetland, a lovely part of the world. I'm reading an Anne Cleves book at the moment, Carrie. <laughs> well, darling, good morning to you, James. <laughs> Hello. First time caller, by the way. You're very welcome. Well, I'm 71 years of age, and I'm going through a transition two years from male to female, and quite frankly, I can't think of any athletes, Olympic or otherwise, uh, who are male to female, to be honest with you. Well, they're, so they're, I think I'm going to give Kate the, the going to give Kate the benefit of the doubt, and, and we can well, say that, yes, there are, but there's a weightlifter. Uh, at what point would you... I mean, I think I don't want to be ageist, Kerry, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you're not likely to be applying for Olympic standard status in I, any no, major discipline. <laughs> Definitely not. But um, certainly uh, the, there are actually uh, female to male athletes out there, and I can't name any, but I'm sure... You see, once you've, um, once you've had been in transition and you've, you've had the operation... Yes. I mean, I, for instance, I'm on... Um, Deca Peptel right now, which is a, 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 a an injection I get once a month, which reduces my testosterone down to actually lower than a woman's. Well, that that's the thing I've got in front of me. There's been quite a lot of scientific research done into this. There's there's yeah. a there's a there's a scientist at, at Portland, Oregon. Let me get this absolutely right. She's called Harper. Um, the testosterone, the, 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 the medical physicist at a large medical centre in Portland, Oregon, has been challenging the assumption. Uh, she published yeah. the first study of transgender athletes' performances in 2015 and found that transgender women who received treatment to lower their testosterone levels did no better in a variety of races against female peers than they had previously done against male run. Well, run. It wasn't no, a massive bit of research, though, before anybody yeah, jumps not, on Not that. only that, of course, now, once you're on hormone treatment, which I've got patches, which uh, I need Have patches you? at my age, and not, not the pills. Yeah. Because of, uh, of uh, because of uh, thrombosis problems, probably. Okay. Yes. Um, then that that takes your body mass down. It also moves the fat moves the fat around your body. It becomes more feminine shaped, which uh, which is happening to me. Gosh. I'm still waiting for the operation. And can I just make an interjection about the Indeed. the female spaces very quickly? Yes, you can. Although okay, I, I, do, I have been fairly clear, I don't want to open that particular no, Pandora's I'm not box open the today. Pandora's but box. Carry Let on. me tell you, I've been transitioning for two years, and when I'm when I'm I'm out and I'm shopping and I want to go to the toilet, I go into a woman's um, toilet. I have to. I can't go into a man's toilet. I could get beaten up. Yes. Now, the thing is that I, I had my prostate operation about 12 years ago, so as a man. Yes. And uh, I've got no sexual motives whatsoever. There's nothing there at all. I still have a penis and testicles. They will be removed very shortly Gosh. once I have the fundings there. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Yes. But uh, there's no sexual drive there at all. And providing that a person has been on um, test you know, testosterone-reducing drugs and, yes. and on hormones, it's not a problem. And that's and the that kind of thing... And quite well. If I, I go into no, a I hear area, you. I hear it's not you. a problem. And, and, and again, you, I mean, I thought I was saying something. I was trying to cover myself in uncontroversial observations yeah. and comments by saying no one with a penis should be allowed into the ladies, and then you flipping ring me up with your penis and your testicles, and you make me feel wrong and ridiculous again. Thanks well, a you bunch. Are, you are basically wrong, but I do know where you're coming from. Yes. Well, I know where you're coming from as well, and I know where you're going. And the question would be... At what point in your treatment would you be permitted to compete as a woman? Because I think this, this argument about testosterone is surely at the heart of the very debate. So when you first decided you wanted to transition, if you tried to join a women's football team, you'd probably accept that you shouldn't have been allowed to. But at some point in, in this two-year, three-year, four-year process... You're going to go, oh, forgive me for being so crass, but you're going to tip the scales and you should be allowed to compete as a woman. Where would you draw that line? If the penis or the testicles have been removed and you have what is called a vagina. Yes, <laughs> so I've heard speak, of those. Then, yes. of course, there's no need to have any injections for a testosterone-reducing drug because the testosterone is gone. Because the, the, the engine has been That's removed from the vehicle. Thank you for holding my hand during a conversation that could have been a little bit difficult for me, not not for you. And that's the whole point, isn't it? That's, that's why we're alive, is to learn and to change and to try to be better and to improve. 71 years old and Kerry is finally achieving her, her real self. And <sighs> quite how you leap from that to some of the ludicrous arguments and claims in this debate is, is, is still beyond me. But I don't think, and I'm pretty sure she doesn't either, it is in any way controversial to do what um, Martina Navratilova has done. Unless I'm missing something else. I, I probably am, and you'll tell me. It's 11.35. Um, indulge me for a minute. It, do you want a little Toto moment? What on earth is a Toto moment? I'll tell you what a Toto moment is. It's when I pull back the curtains of radio production to show you the, the daft old fella 
behind the curtain, pushing buttons and pulling levers. So what I say to Keith and Beth in the break, I say, how long is the clip? Can we play that clip? Now? How long is it? And Beth said, it's 1 minute 38. I said, that's very... Is it 1 minute 38 or 1 minute 48? 1 minute 48, 38, 48, 38, 48. I said, that's very long. But then I said, yeah, this is a special occasion. Let's play the whole thing. What could it be? I hear you say. My friend and colleague Steve Allen was recognised last night for four decades of genuinely brilliant broadcasting. I'm not going to lie to you, I haven't heard every single one of his broadcasts, largely because I wasn't born when he started in this, or I was barely born when he started in this business. Um, but I love Steve Allen, uh, both professionally and on, and on a personal level as well. He is one of the sweetest people I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And if I'd known he was going to win this award last night, I would have gone. <laughs> got a pass. No, I've got a pass. I, I very reluctantly was not able to attend on the grounds of it being my wife's birthday. Um, it's pretty much the only uh, event that would take priority. But but if I'd known, I, I know I could have taken her, but it, you, you, I'm quite old-fashioned like that. On my wife's birthday, I take her to places that she wants to go to, not necessarily places that I want to go to. If I had known that Steve Allen was receiving this award last night, and they didn't tell me because I've got a mouth like the Mersey Tunnel, as you may have noticed... I would have reopened negotiations with Mrs. O'Brien and, and tried to have been there. Thankfully, thanks to the miracles of modern technology, we can hear his acceptance speech. Ladies and gentlemen, for one night only, he's up past his bedside. He stayed off the Prosecco, Moira. My goodness, there's a week's worth of programming in this room tonight. I've been looking around the tables. I've featured most people in here. Most people. I have to thank James Rear, Tom, thank you so much. Ofcom, Ofcom I thank on a daily basis. I've basically got a hotline to Ofcom. They love my show, they really do. I have to thank Ashley, who's just been such a big supporter. Thank you so much. I never thought. 40 years ago that I'd still be, still be working on the same station and still working. I love every day, I love everything, everything about it. And at the end of the month they give you money. Please God it continues. Please God it can, I'm not supporting anybody but I might after tonight. I love working with the people at LBC, they're so nice. I see so many friends in this room that uh, you know I see at work all the time and I, I love every single one of you. Even you lot down here. <laughs> So thank you, thank you so, so much for this. Thank you so much. You've no idea what this means. And I generally cry quite easily. So uh, I'm going to try not to tonight and just say thank you. Steve Allen there receiving a, a, a global award, a sort of lifetime achievement, recognition, richly deserved and arguably long overdue. The great big sausage blubbing. <laughs> big handkerchief, honestly. Um... And, and I will add my congratulations to that. And I will tell you something, that it doesn't come easily to people in this game. It's bad enough that Eddie Mayer has joined us now. Because for my money, Eddie Mayer is the finest broadcaster in the, in the business, pound for pound, doing what we do. Steve does something rather different. Um, but you need a fairly overdeveloped ego to do this job. And when you have an overdeveloped ego, it's sometimes hard acknowledging that other people are better at it than you are. Uh, Steve's the best. Uh, not, 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 not at what I do. We do different things. But uh, in terms of keeping you company via the radio, Steve Allen is the don. He, he is the best. Uh, I, I would, in the course of my lifetime, I'd put him in the ring with Terry Wogan. That, that would be the, the, the slugfest to decide who was actually the champ, who was actually the king of keeping you company. It's different from what some of us do. So, I mean, listen to me now trying to sort of caveat that, that 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 gift so so yeah he's brilliant and amazing he's the absolute best but i don't know if he'd be as good as me at the, of course he would he could do this with his eyes shut so if you've never caught steve's show um it's on at stupid o'clock in the morning so you need to set your alarm uh then then you must i i, I am so so happy and then of course download the global app as well that way you can get my new podcast where is it in the charts i must find out and tell you um 
Steve is the is the business. I don't do this very often because you don't get the opportunity to do it very often. But but he is the one who, when you do this for a living, and I'll tell you now, and I'm going to mention names. I don't care whether I'm supposed to or not. Whether you are talking to Chris Evans or to Eddie Mayer before he came here and became a colleague, they will all tell you. All of the superstars of British radio will all tell you. All of the honest ones that Steve Allen has something that we all envy. But more than envy, we all love it. Well done, Steve. You silly old sausage. Back to this question of trans athletes and um, just the simple observation, I think, that at some point in transition, and Kerry made this point beautifully from the Isle of Shetland, 71 years old and two years into her own transitioning, um, that there will be a point in treatment where any arguments about bi biological superiority become irrelevant or untrue. Uh, you have your testicles and your penis removed, then the production of testosterone is massively compromised. You're having injections, hormone injections, to reduce your testosterone levels. Do you see what I mean? So it, it, it can't be black and white, and that's the tricky bit. I thought I'd found something I could say comfortably, which is human beings with penises shouldn't be going into the ladies' toilet. Kerry, who is still in possession of a penis and testicles, although after a prostate uh, operation and, uh, and two years of treatment and injections, they, they're, not, they're, they're never going to do anything. I, I kind of dressed as a woman, made up as a woman. I, I kind of would struggle to tell her to stay out. As she said, if she goes into the gents, she's going to get lamped. So it, it, it's really, really tricky, which is why I hate to see it dominated so often by contributions, certainly on social media, from people who don't care about what's right and wrong. They care only about the number of clicks and retweets that they might secure. 11.42 is the time. Sorry to, to go on. Rosanna is in Sunningdale. Rosanna, what would you like to say? Oh, hi. Hello. I think once Brexit is done, this is going to be the subject I campaign on. Is it? Um, yeah, it, I care about it a lot. Um, and I come from a fairly, fairly middle of the road. I mean, I completely accept trans women as women. Um, Can I stop I you think, there? Do you mind? Yeah. Where, where, yes? where, when? Do you completely when? accept trans women as women? Because if I now said, from now on I want to be treated as a woman, would you accept that? Um, I would, yeah, I suppose I would have to, to know you uh, somewhat. But well, we're never going to have that. We're never going to have the privilege of knowing everybody who, who, who claims to... No, of course. To... I, I, think, I think, yes, it's not as simple as you say. Um, but on... I'll think of an answer of this before I get no, into No, you don't have to, It's because it's a really tricky one, and that, that's the point I'm it's making. It's really, tricky really one. tricky, and so many it of the contributors totally to the public is. debate think uh, it's really easy. No, no, it's, it's not easy, um, not at all. But I, I also think that the technical differences between a trans woman once transitioned and a biological woman mm. don't really matter. And, you know, they, uh, you know, of course they can never be exactly the same as a woman born a woman, but, you know, does that really matter? Um, anyway, uh, uh, on trans athletes, I think everybody needs to calm down and yes. look at the evidence. Because not only has the Olympics allowed trans women to compete since 2004, didn't know it's that. not just... It's, it's, uh, yeah, you referenced it. No, I didn't ago. know that before today. Oh, right, yes. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Obviously, I knew it when I said it five minutes ago, <laughs> but I didn't know yes. it before that. <laughs> but, but it's not just if you say you're a woman, you can compete in the Olympics. They have uh, levels, criteria that the woman must meet. Are you sure? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. I, there was a trans woman on, uh, an expert on this, on TV giving an interview uh, who's worked with the Olympics and was talking about these levels of, um, of testosterone. That seems to reasonable to me. I, I presume some people might exactly. object to that. Why should I have to take a test? That woman over there doesn't have to. But then you could test everybody, yeah. even the people that don't need to be tested, just to keep everyone happy. Exactly. You know, and, and this is the thing is, you know, once you actually caveat, uh, put all the information and go, it's not just that they're allowed to compete, they have to meet this criteria. And I can understand that can aggrieve some trans women will have an issue with that. But I think, you know, that I think sometimes there are some things that some trans people need to perhaps be a little bit more accommodating for. Uh, well, even I, I, I know, I completely world. understand why you're saying that. And this is somewhere deep down is 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 my sort of um 
thought du jour, as it were, because it, it is the impatience of people who see themselves as progressive with people who are struggling with the change and the pace of change. That, that, I mean, that does apply to everything from Brexit and immigration through to trans issues. And I think you're probably right. Um, but, but then again, if we were on, if I was on 100%, if I was transitioning, if I was in, in the process of becoming a woman or I had already become a woman, I might not agree with you. I might think, no, you don't know. You, you try being me. You, you feel what it feels like to be me and then tell me I've got to be patient and I've got to be a little bit more moderate. These people question my very existence, my very right, and, and that's why we come out fighting all the time. So I kind of agree and disagree with you at the same time, if that's allowed. Well, yeah, well, when, um, when people are questioning their very existence and their experience, I think, you know, no. There's no question of them needing to be moderate there. I think sometimes an example of this is when you get into the debate of people going, ah, but they're not, they're not really, really women because people born women are like this. And there are some trans people who, who say that to say that uh, somebody is a biological yes. man or, or born a man is transphobic. And I think that, that trans people need to kind of accept the fact that... Um, if they um, accept the fact that that while we can still respect them as women, they will never be exactly the same as women, then their side of the debate sounds a little less unreasonable. Uh, well, and, and I've checked. Actually, I'm incorrigible as checked on your behalf. Female to male athletes can compete without restriction, while male to female athletes must undergo hormone therapy according to new guidelines issued by the IOC. So no yeah. surgery necessary, but hormone therapy is necessary, and hormone therapy is the is the um, uh, dis d definer of the strength issue. In, in, in simple, basic, I'm not a scientist. Yeah, and it's if you the definer of time. the transition process, whether you've had the operation or not. You know, anybody who is transitioning has started on that on those these hormone therapies. So uh, uh, after, if I now started taking hormone therapy. How quickly mm -hmm. would I cease to be the absolute beefcake that you see before you today? <laughs> that I don't know. No, not I, I. Seems I, It's relevant, not... though, but it's an answerable question because it's measurable and it's scientific. And you've made me three minutes late for the break by being so interesting. Don't do that again. Um, this Dr. Rachel McKinnon is a very interesting contributor and seems to be one of the main protagonists in this debate and controversy. But here's a, quite an interesting thing. She did win a, a, a title, a world cycling title and therefore became the first transgender woman to win a cycling world title. I don't know if, like the IOC, there are hormone treatment replacements there. And, and the woman who came third was um, perhaps understandably a little miffed at that. But, but again, it's so interesting, isn't it, to dig a little deeper into these stories? Because hand on heart, you said to me, no, there's a, there's a woman who won a cycling race who was born as a man, and, and all the women that she beat were really cross and upset. I'd say, do you know what, that sounds fair enough to me. But I don't know whether she's had hormone treatment or not yet. And I didn't know this bit here, which is a tweet from Rachel McKinnon. Um, the third place athlete, Jennifer Wagner, claims it's unfair for me to compete. At, at the Masters Worlds, she beat me in the 500 metres TT. She beat me in six of the seven races at the 2017 Intelligentsia Cup. In 2016, she beat me in all three speed walk crits. She's won 11 of our 13 races. So the reason why I might have said, well, that seems fair enough, was because I would have presumed a bit lazily that this human being in the women's cycling race was beating all the other human beings in the women's cycling race hands down because she wasn't born as a woman and the rest of them were. But the one who was born as a woman and complained about the one who wasn't born as a woman beating her in a race has won 11 of the 13 races they've had together, which again, I think, gets filed under... Things that make you go, hmm. Um, it is necessary to ensure, in so far as possible, that trans athletes are not excluded from the opportunity to participate in sporting competition, said the IOC, which has opened the Olympics or held the Olympics open to transgender athletes since we learned this morning, 2004. But male to female transgender athletes will need to demonstrate that their testosterone level has been below a certain cutoff point for at least one year before their first competition. Now, I think that's fair, but I can understand the argument while disagreeing with it that would say it isn't. I don't quite understand how this whole debate has been allowed to escalate into such a brouhaha when two things are clearly true. You can't compete unless you can demonstrate testosterone levels that are, broadly speaking, 
allied with female averages and not males. And the second point is we're not really aware of any major competitors. Um, the, the, the cyclist Rachel McKinnon notwithstanding, that was a seniors event. And as we've just learned, um, one of the people she beat when she won a title has been her 11 out of the 13 times that they've raced. So it's not like you're turning up... It's not, I always used to laugh at this. Someone said to me once, you should have two Olympics. One for clean athletes and one for athletes who are allowed to take whatever they want. Um, it would be an amazing sport. It would be like the bar in Star Wars. You'd have all sorts of people lining up on the, uh, on the starting line. And, and I, I get that. But if you're going to have a level playing field, it seems to me perfectly possible for a transgender athlete to fit into a level playing field, even when competing against people of the gender they were born with as opposed to the gender that they've arrived at. So those two things I can't quite get past. The first question of, well, there aren't really any. What are you complaining about? And the second point of, well, then just say if you've got particularly high testosterone levels and you were born male, you're not allowed to compete with the women. I mean, weirdly, it leaves the door ajar for telling... I mean, what about if they started testing men for testosterone levels and it turned out that that fella over there had twice the amount than that fella over there? Should they be competing equally? I'm fairly confident that uh, Tyson Fury has higher levels of testosterone than I do. Is that, does it work like that? I don't, I don't even know if it works like that. I'm, I'm thinning on top. Apparently that means I'm very butch. Um, but you see what I mean. So I'm never going to get in a ring with Tyson Fury. Not in this lifetime. But do, do you see? I mean, would there not be an argument for saying, well, hang on, his, his testosterone levels are way higher than mine. Well, that's not fair. He's much more likely to win a gold medal. I'm just being a little bit, what's the word? provocative in, in a good way I, I'm provoking, thought, thought provoking not provocative, I'm being a bit thought provoking it'll never catch on Elaine's in Forest Hill, have I provoked your thoughts Elaine? Oh yes, but of course a lot were there, you know long time ago um, we, as far as the testosterone is concerned then fine, I think they would have to get it below a certain level Yes, but I'm, I'm quite happy with that but the other aspect which you're bringing into this is the fact that they're supposed to be physically bigger or stronger or they've got more arm length or bigger hands or whatever. The, the thing about that is that this situation existed ages ago when the Williams sisters suddenly appeared on the screen and they just won every match that's possible to get. Well, Rugby Union, I don't know how and, familiar you are with Rugby Union. Since, since um, Joan Lomu arrived on the world stage, Rugby Union has changed oh, the measure, yes. I mean, changed they, they completely. Oh, about him, saying, you know, he's a, he's a freak. Yes, they do, that kind of language was used. Someone who was built like a prop forward but could run like a winger and, and, and Lomu moved, I think, into the scrum having been a back. So what's your interest in this, if you don't mind me asking? Well, obviously, because I'm transgender. You say well, obviously. We're I'm on the trained, radio. I'm... I can't see you. Or, and even if I could, I wouldn't be able to yes, tell you that. you have seen me at your signing Oh, Elaine in Forest Hill? I had no idea. Well, why would I know that? What do you say obviously for? How am I supposed no, to know? because I've met you at the, your signing. It wasn't signing. obvious to me that you you transition. When did you transition? Um, oh, 30 odd years ago. Oh, you did it before it was cool. <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, <laughs> we don't have any of it. Or we didn't even have the internet well, or anything. Well, you like must that come that in thing. for a chat, because how have you been feeling while you followed all? Because we've been speaking to each other for years, and I had no idea that you were no, so no, heavily invested in this issue. Well, it's a compliment, I suppose. Well, of sorts. Um, but no, what I was trying to get at is that this, this point about saying they're physically bigger. Yes. That doesn't work either. To the Williams sisters. Yes, it could. Some women and, are bigger than other women. People, there's a lot of some people, girls, you know, mothers, Czechos, uh, Croatian girls, and everything. They get very upset in a way that they are competing against what they regard almost as men. Yes. So you see, you you could end up in a situation like you do in the um, uh, Paralympics, where you say, and there you say, if different categories, one arm, different it's categories going to of take, disability. It's going to have points, and so yes. on, as opposed to somebody who's only got one leg, because it seems to me. The height of weirdness that you get, those two, the Williams sisters, you could probably quite easily compete in the men's. Well, yeah, but they're not men. In no, any in any way, shape, or form. But, yeah, yeah, like, with, yeah you're, you know, I, I'm sort of toying with the idea of arguing with you, but I, I don't think I'm going to, not just because it's very nearly time for the 12 o'clock news, but also because testosterone level is a physical attribute. So what, what's the difference between testosterone level as a physical attribute and muscle size or, or, or height or, well, or, or, or as you say, length of arm? Because that's 
why you get the, the, the Jamaicans doing so so well in fa- short distance runs. There must be some sort of genetic pieces. inheritance involved because in that. Because they've got this explosive power, which a lot of people, in, from inverted commas, white people, don't yes. have. No, and, and there are a variety of theories surrounding that. Elaine, I am genuinely going to be late for the news. Have you? Do you feel that you've had a sufficient opportunity to put your case? Mm, OK. Are you sure? Well, it, hang on, but never mind. <laughs> well, it's 12 o'clock. I can't, I can't wait for no man or woman or, or ex-men, now women, in your case. I, and that is an absolute education for me. And look, here's a bloke who's 47 and finds some of this a little bit confusing and has just discovered that a woman he's been talking to since he got this job transitioned 30-odd years ago and nobody's freaked out.